Well, it's uh, time to welcome the Fitzsimons family to our broadcast this evening. And uh, for those of you who may know, of course, tragically, we lost Nicole five years ago, a valued member of our commentary team here on Hawkesbury Radio. And uh, since then, in her honour and in her legacy, the Fitzsimons uh, Foundation has been set up to promote a number of things, including travel awareness. And uh, her sister, Kate, joined us once more. Great to have you back in the commentary box, Kate. And of course, it's been another busy year for you promoting that travel safety awareness, you know, really looking after the legacy of your sister. Yeah, it's been another big 12 months and a really rewarding one um, and just seeing the way it continues to grow and the impact it's been having um, with kids and now making it into um, a film funded by like Jetstar and Smart Traveller and seeing the impact that's had and knowing now it can live on and spread far just beyond you know my solo voice has been so so rewarding so I've been all over the place and I'm up and down to Melbourne and Queensland and all that coming up which is exciting too so uh, yeah it just continues to evolve. I I guess for you that's the, what you wanted, you wanted the, the message to go far and wide and, and starting the idea with the, the message and with the, the foundation, you would have obviously had great expectations to, to deliver on that, but has it grown bigger and faster than you might have imagined? Oh, absolutely. I think when we first lost Nicole, it's like how you got to make it through the next day, let alone thinking five years down the track. Um, when I left my corporate job full time to take this on, um, this travel safety campaign on, I was like, you know what, wherever it goes, I'm never going to look back and regret, you know, giving this a go. And I think that is why it's been so successful because people can tell and the kids can feel it comes from a very deep part of me and that's why they take it on board. It's like, guys, go out and explore our beautiful world, but just maintain your safety standards wherever you are in it. Because if it can happen to someone as beautiful as my sister, it really can happen to anyone. So, yeah. And of course, with that growing... I guess, role of the foundation in terms of getting that message out there. And as you say, it's grown bigger than maybe you might have first initially expected. But now you've had to expand the message because you can't be in the same place or all the places at one time. So you've mentioned also that the video now that can be used by, by schools where you can't exactly get to all all places all the time? Yeah, I mean, getting schoolies overseas is becoming more popular than ever in places like Bali and Fiji, and so it's really, schools now are really starting to value the message that I'm, I'm sharing about, you know, celebrating safely, and I knew I can't be everywhere at one time, so I, I got a, a proper producer and spent a good about six months, um, thanks, yeah, as I said, to funding from Jetstar and Smart Traveller, putting together a film that I really wanted to make sure was just as moving and personal as my presentation and the feedback from the students has definitely been one. Um, you know, I've had students be like, how can I purchase one to show my friends and things like that? So they really are taking it on board again, which is amazing. And you mentioned the collaboration with the Smart Traveller. Of course, that's a federal government initiative and you've had the chance through your role with the foundation to, to go and mix it with the politicians in Canberra. Yeah, that's always exciting. I've got another um, Smart Traveller event coming up next month in October. Um, so to always be, you know, in the presence of someone like Foreign Minister Julie Bishop and have her even personally mention me in her speech last year, I nearly jumped out of my skin in excitement. Uh, but yeah, amazing. And, and really, I'm just taking the messages that they have on their site and getting it through to kids in a way that's a bit more, I guess, personal and relatable for them. So then they will follow up on it when it's time for them to travel. Well, I want to ask that question to Vince now, of course, Nicole's father. The family, such a, a mad dragons family. You're all there in your red and whites today. You were supporting <laughs> Illawarra today. Um, of course, this ground, so special for you and more in more ways than one because it was also the venue for a very moving uh, ceremony to celebrate Nicole's life back there five years ago. Yeah, that, that, that's right, Michael. Uh, the ground just holds so much to us as a family. Uh, and he walked past as we came up through to the back of the grandstand here on the way in and saw the plaque. We've got a little family plaque there, along with many other people who donated when the ground was re-established for the Dragons back in the early 2000s. And just to, to see that again just reminds me of what it means. And then, of course, her, her, um, her memorial... Uh, when we lost her here was just the most amazing thing and such a fitting tribute for, uh, for, for Nicole and, and, and for the legacy that we've got in her. And, and just, um, I guess, amplifying what Kate was saying and this is the, 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 the stats and the breakthrough she's got to make with, with particularly the kids when they're travelling overseas. 
I think, um, Kate will correct me if I'm wrong, but we're losing an Australian in Thailand now every 36 hours. So every day and a half an Australian dies in Thailand. And of course there are other places that are dangerous and people just don't realise it. So that message and cut through is just so critical to make sure that we do get people to go overseas and come back um, yeah. healthy and, and well and having enjoyed themselves. Well the foundation has been set up and it has a, quite a number of layers to it of course uh, we, we Kate, fo mainly focus on the travel safety message, but there's also been some, some football element as well, um, given the, your family's uh, real love of the game. Absolutely. We're, we're charity partners of the Dragons, of course, and they've been wonderful to us, as have been the wider rugby league community. I, you could just name name after name of those who have assisted us and been involved with us. Uh, you know, Daryl Broman, um, the, the New York Kings, we've got a team in, uh, in New York that we support, again through Channel 9 and Nicole's Connections. So yeah, it, it's just, it just radiates out everywhere through the, the league community and we're just so, so uh, thankful for that. And of course, what um, particularly Julie leads in the work we do, to one and Nicole, because her passion was sport and performing art, We've taken on board assisting people who, through those medium, are improving their life when they've had adversity, illness, handicap, etc. And, and Julie particularly has done a wonderful job in leading that. And we've just done so much and continue to. Perhaps she could make a few words about what we're doing. Yeah, I'll introduce Julie, of course, Nicole's mum. And, and that was another passion of, of uh, Nicole's life, of course, the dancing, which then moved into sports broadcasting and that's how we came to know Nicole but on the dancing side of things she was a very accomplished dancer had performed overseas and uh, as part of that legacy that you continue on you've been able to give opportunity for for other young up-and-coming dancers yes we have we've done lots of things to honor Nicole's beautiful passion for dance we've um, given over tr um, dancers the opportunity to go overseas and go into competitions and study dance and we've set up a dance from your heart program we received some grant money from uh, St George Foundation and recently from George's River Council who now own this um, Jubilee Oval and we go in and help support classes the children who have special needs they may not be the top of the class but dance is wonderful for their soul and for their um, the activity as well and we've also um, in Kenya in an orphanage over there we set up um, ballet and jazz classes and I went over and stayed there and took some um, 40 kilos of dance gear over so we've done lots of things and Nicole just loved it so it's beautiful to do it. And I guess um Lots of things going on. We've talked about all the different elements with the foundation's work, but it's a way that you can, I guess, bring good out of a bad situation. Yeah, it's just our way of continuing Nicole's passion for life and, yeah, sharing. She loved life, so we just want to do it to keep her, you know, what she wanted to do. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Julie. And Vince? Um, I guess you had some final closing words. Um, well, really, I was going to talk about you, Michael, and, and the support you've given us over the last world, including Nicole and her year when she was working with you here, and therefore that's six years. And you and Jackie and everyone on the, on the team at uh, Hawkesbury have just been wonderful to us. We couldn't ask for better support. I know Nicole would be thrilled with the way in which it has gone and, and, and your support and continuing friendship. So thank you very much and, and congratulations on a stellar broadcasting career. I'm sort of very sorry to hear that it's not going to continue. I reckon you'll bob up somewhere. I don't think we've lost you. <laughs> if I score around the grounds, Newcastle. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, well, I guess um, this will be my final year with the Hawkesbury team after 20 years. It hasn't years. actually been announced yet, I, okay? I, I just hadn't got, I hadn't got around to making the official announcement. Well, the it's cat's out the bag now. Not our best Hawksbury radio at its best. It wasn't a secret, oh, I, so don't worry. I asked you guys if that was out there. I've made hints, but I've I never said it on air. It's, oh. it's on the front page of every newspaper in the country now. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm you. glad I wasn't that one. It's all, it's all good. It's all good live yeah. radio. But, um, yeah. but let's... <laughs> well, I appreciate those words, and, um, you know, we would obviously prefer... To, uh, to form the friendship uh, more closely under, under more pleasant circumstances, but um, we've, we've made the most of a very sad and difficult situation and um, yeah. Yeah. we look forward to being friends um, for, forever. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll stay very close. Yeah. And, and, and to have you at our, event, our events with Jackie, as you've been so many times, we'd just love to have you with us. Absolutely. Thanks again, Michael. All right, thank and you. And everyone else here. All right, well, that's the, uh, the Fitzsimons family joining us there, Nick, and... Uh, 
what it's been a, a great partnership. Uh, we've been able to uh, continue promoting the, the message of the Nicole Fitzsimons Foundation. And we'll keep on doing it as well, Michael. Yeah, five years ago, and it's going to be quite eerie when we come back to Leichhardt in a couple of weeks where it's nearly five years to the day when we last saw her, or I last saw her anyway. And we knew it five years ago when Newtown had that dream run, and she ended up being a Newtown supporter at the end. Yeah, she, she got on board the Newtown train, <laughs> that's for sure. And a and, and reminder to people to log on to our website too at hawksbyradio.com.au. On the homepage, if you scroll down through all the different still there. articles there, you'll see Nicole's 15-year video celebration. We're celebrating 20 years of Hawks Radio Rugby League this year, but five years ago, of course, was our 15th anniversary. Nicole, as part of her studies, put together a great little documentary about a day in the life of the Hawks Radio commentary team. You can find that on hawksradio.com.au.